Lisa and I used our Saturday in Boston to take a two-hour Segway tour of the city. Our guide explained we would be traveling along the harbor, through the various ethnic neighborhoods around the harbor, before riding over the Charles River to Cambridge, and then back into Boston, a planned six-and-a-half-mile circuit through historic Boston. We've taken Segway tours in other cities and enjoy the intimacy of gliding along the city streets. As we rode down the Long Wharf, we passed old brick buildings from the 1700s, as well as modern tour boats and ferries waiting for tourists. We looked out over the waters and saw Logan Airport and the seaport area of Boston. We then headed back towards the Chart House, a great restaurant, and the original location of John Hancock's accounting firm, which was built in 1763. We then headed into the North End and the Columbus Waterfront Park. The Waterfront Park has excellent views of the waterfront and contains the Rose Kennedy Greenway and Rose Garden. The Rose Garden honors Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy, who was born in the neighborhood, and it has 103 roses, one for every year of her life. The North End is Boston's oldest residential neighborhood and a hub of Italian-American culture. The North End has long been an essential part of Boston. It's situated in a one-square-mile corner on Boston's waterfront. The neighborhood offers a mix of history, culture, and cuisine, overflowing with Italian restaurants and bakeries. It was first settled in the 1630s in the northeast corner of the city and was home to ship merchants and captains by the time the American Revolution began. With the help of Paul Revere, who lived in the neighborhood from 1770 until 1800, the North End even played a small part in the war itself when Revere rode from the Old North Church to Concord on his famous midnight ride. The next part of our tour took us into Langoni Park and a section of the Boston Harbor Walk. Stopping along the waterfront, we looked out over the waters to view many of the landmarks on that part of Boston. The USS Constitution, the Bucker Hill Monument, and just the picturesque waterfront itself. USS Constitution, also known as Old Ironsides, is the world's oldest ship still afloat. She was launched in 1797, one of six original frigates authorized for construction in 1794. The Bunker Hill Monument is erected at the site of the Battle of Bunker Hill, one of the first major battles in the Revolutionary War. The granite obelisk was completed in 1843. The monument is not on Bunker Hill, but actually on Breed's Hill, where most of the fighting actually took place. We continued our tour along the Harbor Walk and the streets of Boston. We rode along the Parquet Walkway and saw the benches overlooking the harbor area. We then headed towards TD Garden. We then headed towards TD Gardens, the home of the Boston Bruins and the Boston Celtics. One of the landmarks is the Leverage Circle Bridge. It incorporates both an obelisk shape for the Bunker Hill Monument and rigging for the USS Constitution into its design. The statue outside TD Gardens commemorates Bobby Orr's game-winning goal in the 1970 Stanley Cup Finals.
The West End is a neighborhood of Boston, bounded generally by Cambridge Street to the south and the Charles River to the west and the northwest. The West End is both a commercial and residential area. One of the survivors of the West End's redevelopment is the Last Tenement. It's called the Last Tenement because it is the only tenement structure still located in the West End. It has also been home to an associate of the Angiolo crime family. Our guide noted as we stopped here that every neighborhood in Boston has a park within a 10 minute walk. Here, we looked out across the water and into Cambridge. Cambridge is noted as the home of both Harvard University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. We traveled on Nashua Street and then crossed into Cambridge over the Charles River Bridge, passing the Boston Museum of Science, before riding along the Cambridge Parkway. Along the way, we took in the views of the Charles River. As we left the Charles River, we passed by the Boston Trophy Room, an unofficial display of trophies, medallions, and medals people just placed under the bridge. Leaving Cambridge, we crossed on the Longfellow Bridge, also called the Salt and Pepper Bridge for the towers along the side of the bridge that resemble salt and pepper shakers. One of Boston's most picturesque areas, Beacon Hill has steep streets lined with federal style and Victorian brick row houses lit by antique lanterns. My favorite stop on the tour was Cheers Beacon Hill. Founded in 1969 as the Bull and Finch Pub, Cheers Beacon Hill is remembered as the exterior of the bar scene in the NBC sitcom Cheers. Across Charles Street is the Boston Public Garden. The Public Garden is a large park in the heart of Boston, adjacent to Boston Common. The public garden was the first public botanical garden in America. During the warmer seasons, the four-acre pond is the home of a great many ducks, as well as one or more swans. A popular tourist attraction is the Swan Boats, which began operating in 1877. The 
Boston Common, also known as the Common, is a central public park in downtown Boston. Dating from 1634, it is the oldest city park in the United States. During the 1630s, it was used by many families as a cow pasture. The Boston Common continued to host cows until they were formally banned from it in 1830. South Meeting House is a historic congregational church building in downtown Boston. Built in 1729, it gained fame as the organizing point for the Boston Tea Party on December 16, 1773. Built in 1713, the Old State House was the seat of the Massachusetts General Court. On March 5, 1770, the Boston Massacre occurred in front of the building. Faneuil Hall is a marketplace and meeting hall. Opened in 1743, it was the site of several speeches by Samuel Adams, James Otis, and others encouraging independence from Great Britain. Once we rounded Faneuil Hall and Quincy Market, we arrived back at Boston Segway Tours, where our Boston adventure ended. Le Lisa and I are looking forward to our next city adventure, wherever that may be.